Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and today we're going to talk about differentials, hidden gems, whatever you want to call them for game week 12 and beyond. And hopefully this is going to be a really good one because I really, I'm a really, really a big fan of finding those players who are going to be really good in the future. People haven't quite uh, cottoned on to them yet. We'll kind of try and get ahead of the curve. And uh, yeah, honestly, the, doing the research for this video has really helped me out and helped me with some of my transfer planning as well. So hopefully it's going to help you guys too. Um, of course, if you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like and please do subscribe as well. But before we actually have a look at these players and stuff like that, I do want to actually have a look at the Game Week 8 hidden gems that I came up with. Now, you can see them on your screen now. So in Game Week 8 or ahead of Game Week 8, I did figure out some differentials and I kind of thought hopefully these are going to be the guys who are going to be really good going forward. Oh, I've put on screen what their ownership was at the time of, of, of me making that video, what they are now, and how many points per game they've got as well since that. So in the four game weeks since, how many points per game have they got on average? And as you can see, we really were ahead of the curve with a lot of players, and it, it worked really well. Some of you guys will know I, I went for a few of these players myself, and they were paid off really well. So I don't know if, if, I don't know, maybe this season I've kind of got a little bit better at kind of identifying those hidden gems, but what I'm saying is that... If 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 we can predict the hidden gems or, or the the holders of the future, the big FPL players of the future, if we can predict them as effectively as we did last time, then I, I think we're on for for some good stuff in this video as well. So yeah, as you can see, not all of them here. You know, you can't get every single thing right, but the key is to get most things right. We can see kind of with Huang, Chilwell, um, they, those were both really good picks. Um, you can see Foden obviously was only 1.7% ownership at the time. Obviously, I bought him in at that time when he was only at 1.7% ownership. He's now at almost 15% ownership. So he's, he's become almost an essential player in the space of four weeks. If you went for him early you are doing really well now because you've got all those points before everyone else caught on to him, before everyone else joined you in getting the points. You got there first and you got the big points before anyone else. So really, really huge advantage. So yeah, some hits, some misses, but some really, really good hits, I would say, out of this uh, previous list. Let's try and do the same thing again. But guys, since we are talking about getting ahead of the curve, how about bringing in a great differential for your online shopping uh, ahead of Black Friday and your Christmas shopping as well? This is where today's video sponsor, Pouch, comes in. So Pouch is a free browser extension that automatically finds and applies the best discount codes that you might not know about when you're shopping online. It's helped me save a bit of money from Adidas and Gymshark websites in the past few months. But today, let's have a look on the ASOS uh, website for a winter coat. Now, this North Face jacket looks absolutely sick. So let's go pay. But before we do, Pouch also automatically pops up, lets me know how many discount codes it's found and applies the best one to save me the maximum amount of money. And I just saved £32 without having to do anything at all that easy. So Pouch works with over 3,000 UK websites. That's more than any other similar browser extension in the UK. And with all that Christmas shopping to do, there's going to be loads of uh, discount codes kind of flying about that you might not have heard of. Let Pouch find them for you and apply them for you. It's completely free, so there's literally no reason to not give it a go. It's an essential pick for your browser extension squad. Super easy to install with just a few clicks. Make sure you pin that to your browser as well. The first click being this link here, which is also at the top of the video description. So doing so supports the channel, but also helps support your wallets as well. So uh, yeah, what are you waiting for? Before you start doing all your online shopping, get pouch. Come on. So with that said, let's have a look at the first uh, differential pick, the first hidden gem. And we are obviously starting off here with Sadio Mane, 3.9% owned, 11.9 million cost. So pretty expensive. But uh, with Firmino injured, I do think that Sadio Mane is going to have a really good chance of getting very, very regular starts. There's not really much of a choice here. I know a few of you guys may be worried about the African Cup of Nations. That's not until January. So do, don't think about that too much. But what I will say on Mane is that, that he's kind of seems to me like the only other premium player that is firing aside from Salah like we talk we talk about wanting to have maybe a couple of premiums because having two premiums allows you to rotate between the premiums uh, pretty easily but you know which premium are you going to go for no one else is really firing no one else even looks particularly good on underlying stats other than Mane who actually looks okay so he's kind of third for expected goals over the past five game weeks only behind Aubameyang and Salah so that's pretty good he's first for big chances over this period as well so he's got he's had six big chances to score in five games so that's really really good so 
the underlying stats are there. He's taken a lot of shots. If he, if Liverpool are scoring a lot of goals, which they are, then we know Mane is going to be a little bit involved in that, isn't he? So there is a lot to like. He's maybe a little bit expensive, but if you do want to go for two premiums or you want to bring in an extra premium into your team and you really just don't like the look of any other premiums, and I completely understand that, aside from Salah, there's really not much to go for. Maybe Mane is going to be your differential to go for. Our next pick is Leandro Trossard. So we're all the way down at 2.4% owned now. So this video, you know, we're doing eight today and we are talking real differentials. These are players that, you know, maybe you hear a little bit about them being talked about or on FPL Twitter or on FPL YouTube videos maybe. But uh, for the majority of people, these are not players that anyone is talking about, you know, in, in the wider scope of FPL. These are really, really epic differentials for you to go for, guys. So, yeah, like a lot about Trossard. So, first of all, uh, Brighton are playing well, improving in attack in particular. Trossard has actually played the past five games for Brighton as a central striker. So, we're talking what we, these players we absolutely love, these out-of-position players, players who are playing in a more advanced position than their FPL, um, their FPL position grading um, kind of suggests. So, really... Really, really nice. He's uh, actually the top for shots um, during this past five games as well. So no player in the Premier League has taken more shots than Trossard over the past five game weeks since he's been playing as a striker. So he's had 19 shots. That's joint with Salah. Really, really impressive. He's uh, sixth for expected goals out of all players. He's made 10 key passes as well. He's on penalties. He's got two goals in his last two games. There's a kind of, a, like I say, a lock to like. He's fairly cheap. We're talking about Brighton, uh, you know, an improving team, a team that's looking really good this season and we can get their central striker who is pretty cheap and listed as a midfielder you know it's a really it's a really really nice spicy differential for you to go for you to go for and yeah I think you could potentially be rewarded if you are going to go for Trossard next up we are going to talk about Callum Wilson now, I know we kind of put him in the game week eight uh, differentials video and he's kind of fired since then he's got a couple of goals since then you know he's not really blown the world apart with uh with uh, with his point scores but he has scored two in four since uh since the last time we put him in a differentials video so i am going to try and include him again because i do still really like the look of this differential i'm um, going forward as well so we've got kind of the new manager bounce potentially from newcastle which could improve results and if if results improve if more goals are being scored then you know all you need to do next is identify the players within that team where who might score those goals in and Callum Wilson is a very good candidate for that right so Eddie Howe the new Newcastle manager absolutely loves Wilson he you know he worked with him alongside him at Bournemouth as well we've seen Wilson's already got four goals in his seven appearances he's made for Newcastle in the Premier League season um you know he's not taken a lot of shots but uh, he is very clinical so that's kind of something to be I don't know, wary of that you can't expect him to get a lot of chances and, and take a lot of shots but when he does get that chance you know that the quality of the player how clinical he is how, how talented he is as a forward that he can bury it in the back of the net and that's what it's all about really isn't it getting those goals in trust me guys you guys will know as well as I do it is pretty difficult to find uh, forwards in FPL that are scoring goals right now so maybe Callum Wilson is the answer to that and um, they have got Brentford next Brentford have actually been really slipping defensively recently conceding a lot of goals conceding a lot of chances um, Newcastle also have uh, Norwich in game week 14 so that's a really really nice opportunity to get some goals as well and then Burnley in game week 15 as well so now would be a really good chance to go for Wilson if you want to um, if you're if you're going to leave it a couple of weeks then maybe it's going to be a little bit too late the the uh, the big opportunities to score some nice amount of points uh, with, with these forwards are these next few fixtures that are really good for 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 attackers really so yeah um, maybe one to go for now next we've got Jared Bowen and we've kind of gone from a player who I really think if you're going to get you need to get right now to a player who I don't actually think you need to get right now but this is definitely someone that I really really want you guys to keep a very very close eye on um, over the next few game weeks and really try and maybe potentially even make sure you have a plan in place to get him into your team. So um, Jared Bowen 1.9% ownership again super super differential less than 2% of people going for him right now 6.3 million really cheap as well and uh, although the fixtures are really poor in the immediate term which maybe says okay maybe we can wait a couple of weeks the fixtures do look insane from kind of game week 16 onwards um, including the home game against Norwich in game week 18 so I would say that you kind of have to get Bowen in your team by game week 18 if you're going to do this um, but yeah the, the good fixture run for West Ham it runs all the way through to game week 27 so you really can set and forget some of these West Ham players particularly those that are playing every single game and uh, during this this fixture con congestion speaking of playing every game we've got a lot of fixtures 
fixture congestion over December. It always happens. There's a lot of extra games in December, right? We're, we're talking about a lot of midweek Premier League games and stuff like that. So, um, you know, in that scenario, we are going to see um, uh, Mikhail Antonio rotated a little bit, maybe rested a little bit because we know Antonio, you know, he, maybe he's not fully capable of playing two, 90 minutes twice a week, every single uh, week. You know, that's a, that's a lot. That's a lot for him. And, and what we see is, is when Antonio doesn't play, Bowen is the striker. So Bowen is the backup striker. So he moves from the wing position to become the main West Ham striker anytime that Antonio is not on the pitch, which is obviously really fantastic. So, um, what we're talking about is a player who is going to be playing for, well, who is playing for West Ham, literally one of the best teams in the league, uh, ahead of an insane run of fixtures. This is after the initial, the next four fixtures kind of thing. It's going to be an insane run of fixtures, uh, potentially the main striker, out of position, really cheap, one of the best teams. There is just so much to like about this. I, I am really, really confident that, that Jared Bowen is actually going to become an essential player. And that's why I'm telling you guys, you, we, need to, we need to think about getting him in before everyone else realizes is how essential Bowen is going to be. We need to get in there first. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean right now, but it does mean that we need to at least prepare ourselves for getting Bowen in. Um, also, let's uh, have a look at some of the stats. So, over the past five game weeks, uh, Jared Bowen, he is the second best in the entire league for shots in the box, only behind Mo Salah. He's had three big chances, three big chances created as well, two goals and four assists. So, that's six goal returns in, in five games. Really, really incredible stuff. So yeah, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to getting Bowen into my team, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I don't think you need to get it right now, like I keep saying, but on the radar, guys. Bowen on the radar. So next up, we've got Christian Benteke, 1.3% ownership. Uh, he's a 6.3 million forward. Now, I know everyone wants to jump on some Crystal Palace players at the moment. You know, the Crystal Palace are looking really good at the moment. They seem to be in really good form. They're improving under the uh, stewardship of Vieira. We really like it. They've also got some really nice fixtures coming up as well. So they're looking at their fixtures going forward. Burnley, Villa, Leeds, United. And then even after that, Everton, Southampton, Watford, etc., uh, etc. Et the, fi the good fixtures do go and go. They, they do keep running. Now, a lot of you guys, if you are thinking, oh, I want to go for a Crystal Palace player. You may be thinking of a uh, Tyrick Mitchell, maybe, but uh, I don't really know where he fits in around the defensive meta at the moment. There's so many good defenders to go for, and I'm not sure Mitchell is, is really that high up on that list. Um, a lot of you guys will probably be talking about Gallagher. He's probably going to be Gallagher's probably going to be the main guy you're talking about. Um, let's see uh, what how I don't know. Sometimes it feels like when Milivojevic is not on the pitch, Gallagher kind of suffers. I think it's kind of a little bit more difficult to predict Gallagher's points a little bit because he the, the kind of guy he scores they are a little bit random which makes it kind of a difficult to predict when they're going to come so unless you're just going to set and forget Gallagher in your your first 11 um, all the time I, I'm not fully convinced by this um, there is also the issue of Elise coming back into the team is that going to affect Gallagher um, you know Elise is actually going to improve some players Benteke is going to be one of those players I think you know the creativity of, of, of Eze coming did I say Elise or Eze I mean Eze um, Eze is obviously back in training now um, you know he's going to improve um, he's going to improve the, the goal scoring opportunities for some of those forwards. So, yeah, we can look at Zaha, a little bit of a troll player in FPL terms. We can look at Edouard. I don't mind Edouard, but his underlying stats don't look amazing. And Edouard's also playing quite wide at the moment, whereas Benteke really is playing central. He does look like the best Palace option uh, based on those underlying stats in particular. He's fourth of all Premier League players over the last five games for expected goals. And you probably didn't see that one coming, did you? Fourth for, for expected goals. Benteke is crazy. He's got uh, 2.44 expected goals over the last five, and that's despite only playing 299 minutes, which is significantly less than a, a lot of other people around that area. Um, he's second for big chances. He's had five big chances to score in the last five. Uh, he's expected to be involved in 42% of Palace goals. So if Palace were to score a few, he will probably be involved in those. Um, like I said, Elise coming back. He's in training. He's probably going to be back by the end of November, and that's potentially going to help Benteke. Okay, but it might hinder Gallagher. So if we are thinking ahead and trying to think in the future, we do need to kind of be considering these kind of factors as well. Now, Benteke is a slight rotation risk. I think he does seem to be rested in some games, but uh, I, I'm not sure. I, 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 the last couple of games, he, he's kind of he has been playing. I, I just think that actually this. This is actually could be potentially be a risky but a really nice pick. Now I know it's unfashionable. I know this is not a, a fashionable pick because one. So um, don't write Benteke off completely. I think it could be a good one to go for. Next up, we've got Maxwell Cornet at 1.2% ownership this time, so we're going pretty differential now. Uh, he's looking really good and playing kind of out of position as a striker, despite being listed as a midfielder. He scored three goals in his last three games. Burnley's fixtures, they look pretty good as well, but not amazing. They've got Palace, Spurs, Wolves, Newcastle, then 
after that, West Ham, Watford, Villa, Everton. Um, so, yeah, not bad run of fixtures. We have got a, a, a striker here. If you back uh, Burnley to go ahead and do well, then uh, Cornet is definitely the pl- the one player to go for, and I really probably wouldn't be thinking about going for multiple Burnley players. But uh, what I will say is Cornet is massively overperforming on his stats. He's had three goals from just six shots and just 1.36 xG. If you think that's him being really a, a really clinical player, then fabulous. If you think that maybe actually maybe he's going to regress to the mean a little bit, kind of uh, you know his uh, actual output maybe back in a little bit more in line with his stats, then maybe um, maybe not don't go for it. But I, I do like this pick, but I don't love it. It's a bit of a risky one that I don't think I'll go for personally. But I did want to highlight him as a potential differential to go for if you are that way inclined. We've got Tariq Lamptey next at 0.6% owned. So we are we are under 1% now and we've still got one more to go after this. So 4.4 million. So he's a, re- a really cheap price right now. He's a really interesting pick, I think. He's kind of risky. Um, but, you know, what do you expect at 0.6% owned? He's uh, he, uh, it, During the preseason when he was fit, he was basically an essential player. I think so many people during the preseason when, when Lamptey was fit and we, when we expect, expected Lamptey to start off the season for, for Brighton, Lamptey was in pretty much every single team of every, you know, pro player, experienced player, um, you know, content creator. Everyone had uh, everyone had Lamptey. It was kind of widely recognised that this was an, an insane pick. Now, what Lamptey has essentially had is a very, very late preseason. Um, so can we draw some parallels there? Should we be thinking about Lamptey now in the same way as we did in the actual preseason? Because he's only just coming back to fitness. He's kind of played a, a few minutes. Well, quite a decent amount of minutes as well. He's finally got his uh, his, uh, his first game, first you know start for Brighton in the Premier League. We saw that against Newcastle at the weekend in game week 11. And in that game, you know, I don't even think he was playing as a, as a right wing back. I think he was actually physically playing as a right winger. Like an actual full-on right winger forward type player in that uh, Brighton setup. The Brighton setup looked like more of a four at the back with with, um, with Lamptey playing as the right winger. So we're talking about a, a defender who is playing out of position as a right winger. That is exactly what we want, right, guys? That is, that is you know, finding the next Stuart Dallas kind of deal, finding the next John Lundstrom kind of deal. Maybe we thought we found that in Livermento, and obviously Livermento is doing fantastically, but uh, can we get, a, you know, essentially a second, um, a, a second insane cheap defender in our teams as well? And, and maybe Lamptey's going to be be that guy. So in his one, his, well, his return back to football, his first start back against Newcastle, he took two shots in the box, made two key passes, so it's really nice uh, a couple of stats there to start him off if you do back Brighton to do well this will be a great pick kind of defender playing out of position decent defense decent team it is going to be a lot to do with Lamptey's fitness whenever he's fit he looks incredible is he going to be able to stay fit that's another question if you back him um, this is a this is a player with a, a, a pretty high ceiling for the the cheap cheap price that he is at so particularly if you guys are kind of thinking about moving to a four at the back formation five at the back formation I know a lot of you guys are maybe Lamptey is you know, a, a guy to be your, you know, your fourth or your fifth defender there because that price, you know, is just looking really good. I really like it. And our final differential is Emerson Royale, not at 0.3% owned. That is the most differential of all of the differential players on this uh, list. 4.9 million as well, so slightly cheaper than Regulon. I know probably a lot of you guys are thinking about Regulon. Um, but basically, the situation, guys, is that we know that Conte is going to improve the Spurs defence. We know that Conte ball massively favours attacking wingbacks. We're already kind of seeing this in action at Spurs already. And Spurs fixtures look really good in the immediate term right now. They look really, really good from game week 12 onwards. So Leeds up next, then Burnley, Brentford, Norwich, Brighton. Really, really nice run of uh, fixtures there. Now, I, I think if you're going to take a punt on one of Emerson or Regulon, the time to do it, it is perhaps now, right? Uh, it's just a case of who are you going to go for. Now, Regulon is probably the safer pick. More people are going to go for Regulon. I understand that. He's got a bit more history. People know a little bit more about him. But uh, I do genuinely think there are actually some very strong arguments to go for Emerson over Regulon. Now, I'm not telling you that one is better th- than the other. I'm not. I, I'm not even. I've not even really fully decided myself yet. Um, I might go for one of these players for game week 12, but uh, uh, out of Regulon and Emerson. But I'm not sure which one to go for yet. We are going to probably decide over the next week or, or a week and a bit. But uh, I do want to present some arguments in favour of Emerson because I know you've probably heard so much about Regulon already. So 
what I would say is Emerson is probably the better football player. I, I think Spurs fans will probably agree with that, particularly off the back of the performances so far this season. I think Emerson has, a, you know, well, Emerson does have experience playing as a right wing back, whereas Regulon is kind of more inclined on, you know, more used to playing as a, a, a straight left back rather than a, a wing back a little bit. So Emerson may be a little bit more uh, comfortable playing in those slightly more advanced positions. Uh, Regulon is also a, quite a poor finisher. He's not very good at, at shooting, so maybe he's going to score less goals, even if presented with the opportunity you know, even if Regulon can generate decent XG or taking a lot of shots, is it really going to matter that much if he's not really a very good finisher? And that's kind of about using the stats in in, a, in the correct way. And also, I know a lot of people will be saying, well, you know, Emerson has the risk of rotating with, with Doherty. Yeah, I do understand that that is technically possible. But if Emerson's playing well, then brilliant. But what we'll say is uh, Ryan Sessegnon is actually back in training at Spurs. And Perhaps Sessegnon is actually the more natural wing back than Regulon at, at, at Spurs. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I, I don't. I, I kind of feel like there actually may be a little bit of risk, particularly if Regulon is not performing and and uh, Conte wants goal scoring wing backs or you know that kind of wing back. Sessegnon, we know, is a player who, who who knows how to score goals. He knows how to finish. You know, he's done it in the Championship to great success. Maybe there is going to be a little bit of rotation or even maybe a removal of Regulon from, from the team. I don't know for sure. Look, I'm speculating what we're doing right now is trying to get ahead of the curve, trying to think about possibilities, trying to figure out what's going to happen before it's happened. We are making predictions here, but uh, yeah, maybe some different things to, to consider and think about before we make our decisions. But uh, uh, there we go. That is, that is my uh, spiel on why you should maybe go for the super, super differential Emerson Royale. Emerson Royale sounds like a like a battle royale game, kind of like Fortnite, doesn't it? Um, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really did hope you uh, enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And of course, do subscribe if you're new around here as well. And uh, guys, if you are going for any of these differentials or think you are going to go for any of these differentials, or maybe you've even got another one that you want to share with a group, you're happy to give away your, your differential secrets, do let me know down in the comments. I'm always super interested to see what you guys are kind of thinking in terms of your uh, transfer moves. And let me know what you think about some of these players. Um, do you think I've got any right? Do you think any of them are, are going to be bad picks in the end? Let's kind of find out. But uh, yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, the videos, well, like I keep saying, the videos are going to kind of be a little bit all over the place over the next, uh, you know, well, f during this international break. So hopefully you just, in you, you, hopefully that's okay, basically. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for, guys for watching once again. And I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.